Uh, Diddy, he's going to have a little trouble. Oh, yeah, and so he did. Suarez yes. moves up. That's going to cost him some time. Regan. Oh, he's very descriptive about what his car is doing. Loose in at both ends of the racetrack. He likes the center, and the exit is too loose. Todd Gilliland is the race leader. He has not pitted, nor has uh, Kyle Busch. Ricky Stenhouse just in. Hosevar and Kraus on a lap by themselves. They come in this time. Nope. Gilliland, a great outing in Atlanta, led a career high number of laps. And uh, Kyle Busch has been outside the top 20 all day. Good time for a gamble, I'd say. Well, Tyler definitely caught him a little bit. You saw that mishap getting into his pit stall. Narrowed the gap up, probably a little bit of that uh, stopping early, and the rest of it was the trouble that he had on the pit stop, but uh, did not get the job done in passing, but definitely caught him. Well, Denny Hamlin had trouble coming right out of the pits behind Josh Berry in a four car, and Tyler Reddick pitted a couple laps before him, so he lost, definitely lost some time. Denny had to wait for 99, and, and really this is what it's all about. It's all about time. How can I make the least amount of mistakes, and when I get back on the racetrack, hopefully you come back out in a clear spot, and you can run those first laps and gain the most speed that you can by running the best lap times. And Reddick gained six-tenths of a second on Denny Hamlin during the, their green flag pit stops. And back out on track. So Larry Gilliland, Bush, Stenhouse, Hosevar, Kraus. How long can they run? Yeah, I mean, on fuel, Mike, they can probably run another 40 laps okay. up to north of lap 160. Now, they're going to be giving up so much time. But if we run enough laps and the caution comes out, they'll pit and everybody will come back to pit road behind them and get four tires. It's not like the people that's just pitted will just stay out. Well, they're on the brink of going a lap down anyway. I think they're trying to well, get lucky like chance to operate here. Yeah, their, their cars just aren't very good today, and, and they're hoping that they can turn it down around with a little bit of luck with some strategy and everything that's happening so you never know and and sometimes this will turn your day around if you can catch the caution, caution flag at the right time kyle bush to pit road remember he has three new pit crew members this week among his over the wall crew they changed both tire changers and the jack man uh promoting uh three from the xfinity series that still uses the five lug nut wheel that we've had forever in NASCAR. Uh, they've been promoted up to the Cup Series, and they're servicing this car today. Well, Kyle Busch's team is frustrated, and that's that's why they're probably aggressive with those changes because they had a ca car capable of winning a race. But this is going to be this is going to be the race for the lead between the 45 and the 11 right here. They held up behind Hosevar Reddick yet on that bottom. Heads up move by Denny Hamlin. He gave him a bottom, but he knew that locker was down there. The other thing that's happened right here, the other thing that's happened right here, Clint, is I think the 45 has fired off better than the 11 this time, which that's been the opposite as we've gone through the first couple sets of tires. Probably an air pressure adjustment with that car. Need to take off better, boys. So Hamlin now to second, Reddick to third. Still four seconds back of race leader Todd Gilliland. So that leaves four drivers that have not been at Gilliland, the leader, Stenhouse and Hosevar, fourth and fifth, and Derek Krause, now tenth. Well, Denny Hamlin, with all that trouble that he had, I know he gave up some of that gap, but these guys have established themselves as, I think, the best two cars. Maybe we'll see somebody else creep back up in there. Christopher Bell's making some time and, and making his way back through the through the pack from back qualifying and, and has picked them off one by one. But I think he's really probably the only one that can probably put himself in position with those front two right now. Bell and Elliott, this is for seven. Trouble for the 54 of Ty Gibbs on that pit sequence right there. Lost a number of spots. They were slow in the rear. Had to go back and recheck one of the rear tires on it. That will leave him in 15th after the green flag stop. Oh, let that tire yep. down. Didn't have the right rear wheel on it. Saw that change of look up. Hey, man. Costly mistake right there. 
Fundamentals, boys. Well, it's Don't good. Hurt that, it's good that they jacked that car back up and, and just took the time to fix it because the last thing we need are tires flying around and having something happen like we saw last week in Las Vegas and we've seen so many times. There's just it's so hard to explain how intense the the pit stops are because of the the amount of time that they're on pit road. Nine seconds to a ten second stop is it seems like a catastrophe once you come back out on the racetrack. So these teams. A couple of great moments from Phoenix. You remember right that? There. You remember Alan that? His first ever win. Uh, Jeff Gordon. Uh, what a great salute to Dale Earnhardt as he tied Earnhardt's win total in the Cup Series. Out that was the day the Polish victory lap was born right here in Phoenix. Like and it was pre-planned. Alan said, when I win a race, I want to do something the fans will remember forever. And he did. I always like doing the Polish victory lap because it just you I felt like the crowd could see you could see the crowd. You could see them. You could see them. That was the that was the biggest thing. And he was proud of his heritage. He named it that. And Alan posthumously was inducted into the Polish American Athletes Hall of Fame wow. in Milwaukee. I feel like I, I learned think. something every week from you, Mike. You know what I like that era. Yeah. That, those cars were so cool. The fan base was awesome. Just Really neat race car drivers. Well, here's your progressive race summary. After 141 laps, four different leaders. Talked to Joey this morning. He said, I started on the pro row the first three races this year, but this is the place I expected to get the pull, and that was not the case. He said uh -oh. they had to tighten him up, and he just got slow, and that's kind of where he's been today. No major complaints. The car is turning good, but he's back there mired with the rest of the race. Race of the year that Joey Logano has not started on the front row. Yeah, when you have those days where you just don't really know what you need to do to, to be better, it's just tough to be able to, to figure it out. And you'll have to go back to the shop and, and figure out what did we do wrong uh, fundamentally to, to make the car better. So definitely, definitely interesting at one of Joey's better racetracks to see him struggle. Well, here we go. Got a foot cam of. Alex Bowman here. Look out. Alex is running 11th. I had to figure out where we were. So now that we've shifted, so we're going into turn one. You see him just progressively let off that brake pedal. And when he gets all the way off the brake pedal, he just squeezes that, that throttle down on the right to try to wait for the car to turn and drive it back off the corner when he feels like that the, the tires are gripped up. A little quicker release of the brake down here in turns one and two. You want to you put that throttle down a lot harder right there as you're driving up the banking towards the start finish line. Up to fifth gear. You want to have that big spike in the brake pressure right as you come down into the corner, and you want to release the release the brake pressure slowly to help the front tires turn. Are staying right down on that yellow line on the bottom. Pretty good hot rod right there. He seems pretty smooth with his steering wheel. Tells me he's got a pretty good grip level in that car. Yeah, it's it's you know I think that I think the car is. I mean he's got a decent car, but I think that the things that the guys do up front, they can just move around the racetrack better. And just being locked at the bottom uh, is not what the guys are doing up front. Jamie. And the best looking 